Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to your Gemini June 2022 reading and predictions. Hi, I'm Nigel St. James. For those of you who are stopping by for the first time and for the subscribers, it's always good to see you. You know that. I, I love uh, reading for you each month. Now, while I'm pulling the cards, there's quite interesting general astrology going on out there in the heavens. Some of you may be looking at this in the month of May, uh, so I'll look at what's happened in May. And, um, and also um, just a quick note on uh, what's happening in June, which is the focus of our card reading today. Well, the first thing is that in May is that Mercury stations direct in your sign of Gemini. And uh, that's great for you. That's your planet. So you'll be right at your uh, right at your best at that time in the beginning of May. And what's also interesting is that on the 13th of May, Jupiter, which had been in Pisces, moves into Aries, the cardinal fire sign of Aries. And that's on the 13th of May. And on the 27th of May, later in the month, Mars actually ingresses into Aries. And then what happens is, is that Mars and Jupiter form a conjunction, which is uh, a great uh, thing because Venus is also hanging around in Aries for most of the month. So you've got the two benefics, Jupiter and, and um, Venus in that cardinal fire sign of pioneering things. So you might find that uh, or have found that you are going it alone with respect to a number of things that you might be really relying on yourself to move things forward. Certainly it's a time and you probably have seen it of abundance and gain. I'm pretty sure that last month the Tarot reading for you uh, talked of abundance and gain for for May. Nevertheless, um, we then look at June and then what happens is that you see then, of course, uh, Mercury, which had been then in retrograde at the start of the month. What happens is, is that Mercury then goes uh, stationary and direct in Taurus, but it is square Saturn, which is in Aquarius at that time. And so even though Mercury is then going direct and as the astrologers will tell you, that was judgment, by the way. What's this? That's the Knight of Swords. As the astrologers will tell you, you can have uh, a few things go wrong when there's a Mercury retrograde going on. But even though it's gone uh, stations direct in Taurus, because it's squaring Saturn in Aquarius, you might find what I call a retrograde hangover occurring. And uh, however, both Mars and Jupiter are still in Aries throughout the month. And so you'll have a lot of enthusiasm, I think, for things which could actually have some quite high risk attached to them. So just be careful how you weigh up your options that are there. But then Mercury um, goes back into Gemini. Mercury goes back into Gemini. And when it goes back into Gemini, it sextiles Jupiter. And then it sextiles later in the month, Mars, there's the Knight of Cups. And so anything that had been delayed by uh, that retrograde of Mercury that was going on before, or that hangover, as I call it, due to the square with, uh, with Saturn, things should start uh, moving forward for you in June. But anyway, we'll see what this is here. Finally, the card is this of the eight. Is it the eight? No, it's the three of swords. I should get this prescription changed. Well, come down, sit down here next to me. We'll have a good close look at these cards together while I do the reading for you. And by the way, if you want to have a personal clairvoyant reading with me, just check out the information below. Now, well, I think we should start with this major arcana. This has got a, this deck is beautifully painted. And as a result, the images in there are, evoke for me a lot of messages that I think are there for you. Here is the judgment card. Well, um, looking up here, this is obviously here, the, the eagle uh, spirit, the spirit of the eagle in the sky symbolizes the God creator calling to your soul and consciousness, to awaken to your higher self, as well as 
after your worldly responsibility. Now, the eagle in Native American tradition represents our connection to the divine, incidentally, if I'm not mistaken. There's also a bear here. You can see this outline of a bear in the sky. Well, that represents the constellation Ursa Major, Big Bear, the star constellation, which we often call the Big Dipper. Now, the bear symbolizes the power of looking inside yourself. Now, the seven stars, which you can see on the bear here, they're the seven stars of the Big Dipper, and they're associated with the seven rays of God's breath, represented by the rainbow tail that is coming down here, descending down from the eagle. Each color of the rainbow has a sound, thus the call of the divine flowing into your life. Now the day here is just dawning, symbolizing renewal for you. Now in this image also, there is a Native American who is experiencing a rebirth from the golden egg that's there after a long incubation and perhaps mm, mythically a hibernation in the dark cave. The dark cave in Native American tradition symbolizes the great void where all solutions and answers lie in harmony. It is also the dream lodge where illusions burn away to the truth and then to expansiveness of eternity. Now this being ascends through the cave into the rainbow light of spirit and into renewal. Now on his cape, there is, if you see here, whirling around. What does that look like to me? Well, that's a, a whirling rainbow, and I think that symbolizes truth, the giver of life, unity with all colors and nations, working for peace on all level. Seven eagle feathers drop down there as well, and they hang from the cape. Each has the color, or a color, of the rainbow that corresponds to the seven chakras and the seven rays and the snow-covered mountains that you can see there in the background they symbolize the spiritual heights that can be achieved on your journey as well as the limitations and blocks that you encounter on your ongoing path to spiritual enlightenment now there's down here lotus blossoms i suppose that look like they well they lotus blossoms symbolize resurrection purity and spiritual illumination but it looks to me like they can you see it down there? Looks like they're growing out of the fire. And that, I think, expresses the desire to ascend to spirit. Now, the planet associated with this judgment cloud is Pluto, which is all about transformation, death and rebirth, ego death, the underworld, surrender, destruction and regeneration. Now, what else might we say here is that I think this energy here opens the pathway to self-realization and to your self-love, where your consciousness, in a sense, is reborn into the universal mind of source. The higher self is calling upon your ego to rise up to be renewed. Uh, with judgment energy, you achieve wisdom and the understanding that you are a spiritual being living in a physical body. Know thyself. Well, that was the advice given by the character Polonius to his son Laertes in the play Hamlet by William Shakespeare, but know thyself is key to living a fulfilled life. Now, you will 
view life from a greater perspective with vast horizons. Your life work is to serve the highest good for all. Now the third eye or the sixth chakra is associated with judgment. Awakening your inner sight, if I could put it that way, maybe a degree of psychic awareness. Now judgment here is positive energy that brings completion, healing, rebirth and renewal. Exhale and breathe in the love from the divine and the opportunities that lay before you and trust. Now going to the to the diagonally opposite side, we might have a look at this Three of Swords, shall we? Ah, another beautiful painting. Let's see what this has got. What do you have to tell my friend here? What do you have to say? Well, in this image of the Three of Swords, the broken heart has lightning bolts, which is about realization of personal truth or spiritual awakening it can also represent a movement lightning bolts shooting through it the three swords point to the center of the heart and to the mind of the weeping woman and they bring clarity now the angels at her sides, you can make them out here. See these little wispy white things here? You can see like a form of a human head there. Of course, they don't have human heads uh, at all, angels. They are centers of consciousness. Nevertheless, the angels at her sides are whispering, grow, grow, grow. You see, you forget in times of deep sorrow that you are never alone. The angelic forces and the divine are always with you, sending love and support, holding a space for your next stage of growth. Now, the clouds which are up here, uh, the clouds of emotions, I think, they rain teardrops of sadness. But each teardrop has an inner glow and as the tears descend through the angelic realm, they become stars of new possibilities. Now, the woman kneels on a, you'll see the outline of it here, this violet lotus, which is about opening the heart to growth and enlightenment. Now the lotus shares the, the energy of the starry violet pool of spirituality and the oneness of the cosmos. Now, it is the case, I think, that perhaps there are painful memories that are being held in the mind and the heart, which need to be looked at, accepted, processed, and let go so you can heal. The Three of Swords encourages you to empty the sadness in your heart. The pain of losing something special is an individual experience that each person processes differently. There are the stages of grieving, denial, anger, guilt, vulnerability, loneliness and depression. The ultimate goal is to take back your personal power and gain the strength to begin to live your life at a renewed level. Understanding and wisdom come. As one door closes, another door opens. The Three of Swords silver lining, I think, for you is that it cleanses your mind and your heart from the heaviness of life's pain. Because life is a lot about pain. It brings truth and clarity to situations, to relationships or issues that have been in denial. It changes the focus off old emotional wounds and defeating thoughts to the present. Cleansing is not an easy process, 
but the rewards are many. Cleansing gives you a sense of lightness and strength. The cleanse of the Three of Swords detoxes and rejuvenates spirit, so a new identity and perspective can emerge. Now, the Three of Swords can indicate a breakup in a romantic relationship, a friendship or a partnership. You may discover a disappointing and painful truth about someone or something. You may. It indicates an issue involving three people or three situations that might be causing distress. It can signal betrayal and being let down, as well as sudden and unexpected change and loss. But things are getting better, don't worry. These cards have yet more to say. But you get the picture about what I'm saying. I guess when the three here enters, brace yourself for the odd tear or two. But tears are a form of, of cleansing. And when you have cried your last tear, you begin the process of healing. Well, let's see how this is going to unfold for you. And let's look next at the, well, these two great love cards. I see them as these two knights, the way they're positioned with these other cards around them and the elements that work with them. Let's have a look at this image here, shall we? Well, this is really quite straightforward, I think. Now, in this card, a traveller is in, uh, well, is sleeping in an orca canoe. An orca is, these things are orcas, otherwise known as killer whales. My daughter tells me, reliably, apparently, that orcas are actually dolphins or a form of dolphin. Nevertheless, uh, this traveller is wrapped up warmly in, in sealskin. Now, the two orca are guiding the canoe through the cosmic portal of transformation to new shores of insight and perspective. Now, orcas actually symbolise the guide and protector who creates the portal where a person can return to their inner home of cosmic memory in the soul, awakening them to their true self. Now here we have the sun, and that's shining the horizon, signaling a new beginning. And the six swords shoot out into the starry universe, presenting expanded awareness. And the spirit orca, you can see it here in an outline there, in the night sky symbolizes peace and freedom. Now, this six of swords in this position, I say that it, it moves you away from painful grief, conflict and negativity to peace of mind and into new potential. If life has become overwhelming, and I'm looking at this card here that we just discussed, if it has become overwhelming with difficulty, stress, and feelings of defeat, this card brings a quiet, calm departure from those experiences, giving you time to recover and dream of new horizons. The Six of Swords here signals the beginning of a spiritual journey to healing. The key to the Six of Swords is to walk away from unhealthy situations that are depleting your personal power and stealing your self-worth. The gift of the Six of Swords is universal support guiding you to a deeper understanding of yourself and your life regaining spiritual strength and bringing a fresh start. So the Six of Swords here really represents stepping away from, as I say, difficult situations, cutting through illusions and fixed perspectives, moving into truth, viewing life from a clearer perspective. Now, whatever difficulties you have experienced, whatever charge it had for you, the conflict is now leaving. 
Now you may feel defeated and depressed, but remember those feelings come from outgrown perspectives and attitudes that now need to be shifted into a higher way of thinking. And this card is giving you the energy to do that. This card, this energy is bringing you to a safe place where you can pick up the pieces of your life. The Six of Swords represents getting stronger mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. It signals, can signal, a relocation or moving. Your life is moving in a positive direction. The tides of life, they're always shifting between the polarities of positive and negative energies. Your job is just to stay centered, balanced, while flowing with the rhythm of evolution. Sometimes, look, we can all get lost out there. The Six of Swords, though, brings you back to your inner home. Now, let's have a look at these two remaining cards, which are both knights. And we may as well start with you, seeing as you are sitting there ready to be looked at. Now, here we have the knight... Uh, it's the Knight of Cups, of course. And here we have the Knight riding a white horse or unicorn. The unicorn is a symbol of purity of heart, innocence, and love. Now the Knight holds the Grail or Cup in his right hand, the masculine, active side of the body. Now the Grail or Cup, the Holy Grail we might call it, provides truth and wisdom. The Grail is a symbol of the highest order of spiritual evolution for which the, the knight searches. The Grail glows with powerful, driving life force. Now, there are some, you may or may not be able to see these on here. There's some little, little delicate little doves decorating the cup. They are messengers of the divine, and they symbolize love, peace, and purity. Now, the knight himself has angelic wings. That's what I would call those things there, by the look of it. And they symbolize his connection with the archangel Gabriel. Now, on the shoulder of the armor of the knight is the emblem of the eagle. Now, the eagle, of course, is the most exalted form of the astrological sign of Scorpio. Now, metaphorically, the eagle bridges heaven and earth. The knight's cloak holds the starry ocean of, this is his cloak here, and that's holding the starry ocean of subconsciousness. The deep blue color is the color of the third eye, indicating insight, wisdom, intuition, and possibly clairvoyance. The school of fish swimming around this. Now, he's got a shield here, which I would say is the Wheel of Fortune, but emblazoned upon it is a labyrinth. Right. Yeah, I'd say that's what's going on there. Yeah, anyway, back to the school of fish. They're swimming around uh, this labyrinth, and they, they symbolize, I think, the wisdoms, the many wisdoms which may be found on your journey of inner exploration. Now, there's that labyrinth there. The outer rim of the shield, which underneath it I think is probably the Wheel of Fortune, is decorated with stars, which you can see there, these little white points. These are the phases of the moon. And the, the labyrinth actually is an ancient multicultural tool that guides people to the quiet center of themselves, allowing a safe and sacred place to connect with the divine. Yes, well, for me, this uh, energy here of this Knight of Cups really is similar to that of the Archangel Gabriel. They're really one and the same. Gabriel speaks to the hearts of people. Gabriel assists in channeling and prophetic dreams. Gabriel symbolizes feelings and the power of love. 
Uh, his element is water, and he holds the chalice of everlasting love. Gabriel is the messenger of love from the creator, from the, the, the divine. Now, when the Knight of Cups enters in the center of the spread, as it has done, it can indicate a journey over water, or you may have a spiritual calling to take a, a journey or a trip to some sacred place. Could be you know, want to go and see a cathedral or a church or some geographical place. But what he does do is he brings romantic love. He can represent the coming or going of emotions. The Knight of Cups, I think, is asking you to follow your heart and listen to the messengers in your dream. He, he, he indicates heightened psychic abilities, I think, prophetic dreams, and out of, possibly out-of-body experiences for someone here. It is, it is a time for trust and exercising your intuitive thoughts and ideas into your life. Explore your creativity through the arts, perhaps, because the Knight of Cups inspires you to open your heart chakra. He encourages you to, to sit down, to contemplate, perhaps to meditate, connecting the energies of the heart with the higher self. And I have to say, he does bring romance, love and kindness, as well as new relationships, experiences and, and proposals being made to you by other people. He asks to honour the true path of the heart. So have an open and courageous heart that is compassionate. And then that takes us finally to this Knight of Swords. Hello, Knight of Swords. Splendid to see you here and to see you looking splendid, my dear fellow. Now, what we have here is uh, the Knight charges down from the heavens towards the earthly realms, holding his sword, which is about virtue and protection, upright, ready for action. He is focused and intent on his mission. Now, the, the knight's armor represents the stars of infinity. You see all these stars that are around there? They represent the stars of, I think, infinity and boundless opportunity for you. And I'm just looking at this snake that's on his helmet there. That symbolizes, I think, rebirth, renewal, purification, life force and healing. The lightning bolts that are here in the background shooting down with him, bringing spiritual enlightenment and realization of personal truth and expanded awareness, awakening you to new thoughts and desires and to new ideas. Now, the white-winged horse, well, that's the famous Pegasus. And I think that this represents a time of new consciousness and bringing forth new inspired ideas of the intellect. White, of course, symbolizes clarity and purity of mind. And the wings of Pegasus give him and the knight connection to the celestial realms. Now, Pegasus' body holds the energies of the subconscious and the conscious mind in balance. And again, I think there's underneath here this wheel of fortune, probably that it's supposed to be acting as a sort of a shield thing here. It's overlaid with the cosmic astrological wheel. The celestial wheel is used to gain insight into your destiny. The eight pointed star that's in the center of it here, that symbolizes the phrase as above, so below. So together, the star and the wheel bring you deep understanding and insight. Now, the Knight of Swords is the Archangel Raphael. As far as I am concerned, that's the same energy that I'm getting here. When the Knight of Swords comes into your life, there's going to be a dramatic and sudden change. A big shift is coming that can spin your life in a totally different direction. It can bring healing 
or a profound aha moment, or can hit like a lightning bolt, pushing you out of your comfort zone, forcing you to look at shadowy aspects in your life. Or it can indicate a life-changing event, really. The night signals the onset of insights and inspirations that are going to move you into new creative directions. He brings clarity to the mind and solutions to challenging situations. When he appears in this position, it's time to pay attention to staying focused on a plan or a concern. Don't allow yourself to be distracted. The night signals a time of travel and changing residence, perhaps. All these nights stand for a love affair. And the Knight of Swords indicates somebody who may be entering your life who could well be about to sweep you off your feet. Who knows? Anyway, what a great set of cards for you. Well done, you. That's the way it is this month. That, my dear friend, is your reading for June 2022. I love doing readings for you. Did I mention that before? I really do. I'm always excited to be doing it and I'd love to, I'd love to see you. And if you're here for the first time, welcome and I hope to see a lot more of you. Subscribers, thank you very much for being with me all this time. I really enjoy your company. Drop me a note in the comments and we can see how we're, we're all doing. But in the meantime, remember this and remember it always. And it is that you are a legend and I look forward to seeing you again next month. Until then, it's bye for now.